Happy Friday, Mavericks. This is Rob Reinhold, and it is again the trading room. We just wrapped up July monthly options expiration. I gotta say, we were bullish all month long. It tailed off at the tail end. It's never great when we go into this monthly options expiration. We get a little sell-off, but this is where we pick ourselves up and we move on. In this session, we're going to talk about what happened this week, talk about some of the news, and then we throw away everything we thought last week. We start with a clean slate. We score the markets, we score the sectors, and then we go in and find the best stocks in those sectors. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's get ready for the week. This week was the first down week we've had in a while. In fact, we had the biggest sell-off we've had since April. Now think about it. We are in late July since April. So we have gone about three months without a meaningful pullback. This market has been very, very bullish. And in fact, even this week on Tuesday, we had hit all-time highs on the S&P, on the Dow. Everything was still party mode. And then we just got three really ugly days. When we take a step back, we're going to take a look at the charts and see, okay, it's nasty. It's a pullback. But was there really any trend change? We're also going to take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ did not make new highs on Tuesday. That's a sign that, and we've been talking about this. I said last week, be very wary of the outperformers in May and June. And sure enough, they have been hammered. We saw the dollar strengthen a bit. We saw bonds climb up a bit. So look, these are things that the stock market doesn't love. But look, they were barely up for the week. This is really just more about profit taking than anything else. This is a story of profit taking at this point. We did get second quarter earnings and they were pretty good. The financial earnings at the first part of the week were really good. And you saw lots of financials breaking out and running. The sector was up for the week. We also got Netflix on Thursday, which is really the first one of the big bellwether tech stocks that really drive earnings season. They came out, the stock went down a little bit after hours and then took off up after hours. It opened up about 10 points and then it closed down about 10 or 15 points. I want you to understand that 10 points is not that big of a deal when you take a look at a $600 stock. That is a very small move, and it was much, much smaller than the market anticipated. So really, earnings were just fine. Next week, we get a whole lot of earnings, but this week, earnings were just fine for the market. The sell-off came just because we saw some profit-taking. Let's talk about some of the news we had. This is the one I really wanted to focus on, and I talked about this last week. A slowing economy has been good for the stock market. I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but in this environment, a slowing economy means rate cuts. Everyone wants rate cuts, so a slowing economy is good until it gets too slow, and then it becomes bad. And I talked about, at some point, all of these bad reports, like this Empire State Manufacturing Index, which was worse than expected, are actually good news. However, we got good retail sales. Now, this is a good report because this lets anyone who's worried about the consumer feeling too much pressure, it's showing them the consumer is still out there spending. Overall, the market is saying that the economy is still strong enough. We simply had a sell-off because things got a little bit too extended. Let's take a look and see how bad it was. If we just take a look at the numbers alone, you're going to see it was very isolated. The Dow was up. This was mostly due to United Healthcare. The Dow is a price weighted average, so the higher price of the stock, the bigger an effect it has. United Health is a $400 stock that had a huge run, so it pulled it up. So let's just forget about the Dow. So the S&P was down 2%. But remember, 31% of the S&P is the Magnificent Seven, which is the majority of the Qs. This is where we felt the pain. 
4% in those kind of stocks that bled into the S&P. But take a look at small caps. Small caps were up for the week. Now, granted, they had a great Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they had a pretty lousy Thursday. Thursday, the small caps were down more than anything. But it's showing you that this market, if you take out all the tech stuff like we were trying to do on the upside to show you that this market is still hanging in there at the moment. Oil down, gold down. Let's take a look at the charts because this is really what matters here. And we can see that we did get a little bit of technical damage. The first area of support we always look for in an uptrend is the 20 day moving average. Well, guess what? That broke. We tried to hold it on Thursday. Look at that candle on Thursday. We tried to hold it. We had a little up move at the first part of the day and then we just sold off, closed down near the lows. The next level that we need to look for is basically right here, 5,500. This is the prior resistance area where the breakout happened back in the 1st of July. It We could bounce on Monday and at this point it's still technically a bull market. If we broke through this, all of a sudden now we're starting to get some real technical damage. And the next level is going to be down here at the 50 day moving average, where we kind of have our line in the sand. Above the 50 day moving average, we're generally bullish. Below, we're generally bearish. That's going to be a real problem technically for these markets. As you can tell, I'm looking at these markets and I'm not trying to put a spin on this. Trust me, I understand these were three ugly days, but I'm just walking through what technicals are saying. Technicals are saying if it doesn't bounce at 5,500 next week, we're likely going lower to touch that 50 period moving average. If we break below that, then we can say that this last latest uptrend is over and now it's either a sideways or a downtrend. As you can see, I'm not trying to predict what's happening. That is what a problem is. When traders get into this at first, they think they need to guess, they need to predict. And really you just want to, I don't want to call it react because that's not the right way, but you want to look at all of the possible things that can happen and be ready for any of them. So at this point, no question, we're in a deep pullback, but we still have some support levels before we can say that it's technically broken. When we come over here to the queues though, this is where it gets a little bit harder to make that case. So let's go through the same thing. 20 period moving average. That has been support in the past. You can see all the way back here. It got pretty close here. We broke it. So the first one is down. And the second one should have been right at this level, which ended up being the same level of the 20 period moving average. It broke. We're down here at the next support level. This bounce right here. We're right there. And you can see we are not far away from the 50 day moving average. The Q's look much, much worse. And I am much more bearish on the Q's. But look, I cannot be actually bearish. So when I say much more bearish, I, gene, I just mean much less bullish on the Q's than I am on the rest of the market. But I haven't gotten to where I'm bearish. If you think about a meter, you know, all the way bullish, all the way bearish. I'm really close to in the middle on the cues and one or two more candles and it will go into the red where I am looking and saying, hey, I want to be net bearish in tech. At this point, we are still surviving. And if it bounced here on a technical basis, you could look back and say, see, it held all of its points, but it is looking grim here on the cues. Taking a look at the heat map. I really like this heat map lately because it's very easy to take a look at the headline numbers and just feel terrible. Take a look at this heat map for the week. I see more green than red. Now granted, the red I see is really red and it's in really big boxes which show the market weighting of the S&P. I mean, we're looking at just this entire square is like 40% of the S&P and you can see it got hammered. Take this square. This is another, you know, 15, 20% of the market. It has just got hammered. 
Outside of that, you can see that this was, again, it wasn't a good week. And again, I'm not trying to put lipstick on a pig. This was an ugly week. But I just want to really go in deeper and show you that on the average stock, it's not a disaster. For the Magnificent 7, for the NVIDIAs, all the semiconductors, Apple, Google, Amazon, it was a bad week. It was a disaster of a week. So we need to talk about where this goes from here because as I just broke down, markets have support. The S&P, the average stock market, looks okay. The Qs look terrible. I've been saying for the last two weeks, be very wary of those MAG7 stocks. We want to play outside of there because we think it's going to be broadening the rally. Second quarter earnings really pick up. So big ones here. We've got Google, Tesla on Tuesday. We've got other tech, other healthcare. This is a busy week. And then next week is pretty much going to end the second quarter earnings season. Let's take a look and see what we've got on the calendar for the week. The only thing I'm looking at, we've got two reports I think are important. We have what's called advanced GDP. Now what this means, remember, you get three GDP reports per quarter. You get the initial, or now they're calling it the advance. I guess they are calling it advance now. It used to be called initial. But advanced GDP, this is the first report on second quarter GDP. Remember, the quarter just closed three weeks ago. So this is a very early report on GDP, and this is the one that matters the most. We are looking at a 1.9% forecast for advanced GDP. That's a 2% economy. I don't know if you guys remember the economy from 2012 to 2020. It was basically a 2% economy the entire time. We had some times where we were closer to three and sometimes we were closer to one. But the stock market did great. It did great with 2% growth. 2% growth in GDP is enough to hold this market up. If we get down into the, to the low ones, that could be some problem. But again, advanced GDP, I think is going to be one you want to watch. And then on Friday, in the past, we've said this is very, very important. The core PCE price index, which is the Fed's favorite inflation measure. I actually do not think this one is important. Let's think about where we are right now. The market has priced in like a 90% chance of a rate cut in September. I think it's like 85 the last time I looked. It's basically baked in the cake. The Fed has come out and said, we're ready to cut rates. Everything, they're ready to cut rates. So let's say that this one report, this PCE price index comes out at 0.3. Do you think the market's going to suddenly think that the Fed's not going to cut rates? Probably not. I think they're going to look at it and be like, huh, well, it probably doesn't prohibit the Fed from cutting once in 2024, which is what the market is expecting. So I think if it's, if it's higher than expected, I think the market shrugs it off. If it's better than expected, then all of a sudden we're now talking about two rate cuts, three rate cuts, four rate cuts. The market gets excited about stuff like that. I really like asymmetric risk in trading. When you can look at a situation where worst case scenario, it goes a half a percent against you. Best case scenario, it goes 5% for you. I'll make that bet every time, even if it's 50-50, even if it's 30-70 against me, the risk reward bears out. So I do think that this one here, I don't think it's gonna be very important at first, but it could ignite a little rally if we are uh, you know, looking for something late in the week. If we look at our technical score, we are below the 20 day moving average. We're still above the 50 and the slope of the 20 and 50 are still bullish. They're getting close, but they are still bullish. We're at a plus one. So it's just telling us back off of our bullishness. We're still bullish, but just back off. You can't really be super excited here. You can't be playing long calls on these high flying stocks. It's just not the right time to do it. Let's go in and take a look at the sectors and score them from plus three to negative three. Last week, you can see technology got crushed down 5.5% in a week. That is a big move. And look, we talked about tech 
has been sliding from plus three to plus two. It's going to slide all the way into the negative this week. Once you take out tech, okay, consumer got hit, 2%. But once you take out consumer, now look, if you look at consumer for the month, consumer's been the best sector. So if a consumer sector goes up 8% and gives back two, that's still fine. Take a look at everything else. Everything else did great. Everything else held in. We had real estate at a plus three. It was up for the week. We had financials at a plus three. It was up for the week. So again, it looks still looks really good. Everything that's, that has been relatively strong held in really well. So again, we want to hunt for the right sectors. Be long in the sectors that are showing strength. Be short in the sectors that are showing weakness. And for some sideways plays, we want to take a look at things going sideways. And here is utilities. And it fits the bill for a sector going nowhere. We are between the moving averages. They have flattened out. This is neutral territory. Great time for butterflies and condors. Sideways stuff in the utility sector as a zero. Communication services was a plus two last week, but... If you remember last week, I said, hey, it's a plus two, but it's sliding from a plus three to a plus two, and it's probably going to go lower. Sure enough, here we are. It is at a zero. Now, the question is, is this a pullback? When we take a look at some key levels here, it's right at this pretty major support level here. Could it go lower? Of course. Will it go lower? Probably. Closing on the low is not a good sign that there's people that want to come in and buy. You typically get more until you get like a hammer candle. Then all of a sudden you can see, oh, buyers are coming back in. There were no buyers on Friday. I think this likely goes lower, but this is a zero. It's a zero at this point. So you could take a look at some shorter term butterflies on this, I think. Maybe be a tiny bit bearish. Real estate was a sector we loved at a plus three. And hey, it was up for the week. And look at these candles on Thursday, Friday. Keep these in comparison with the candles we saw on the market. Big, fat, red candles opening at the highs, closing at the lows. These are great candles. These are absolutely great candles. If the market pulls back more, these are probably going to go with it. But you can see they're very begrudgingly going to go down. Where other things just want to turn over. Here we have healthcare. Healthcare was slightly down for the week, but you can see that there was lots of days this week. It was really good. And on Wednesday, everything looked absolutely fantastic. Thursday was ugly. Thursday was a nasty, ugly candle, but Friday was an up day. Think about that. Friday was an up day on a day where the market lost about a percent. So we're going to stick with the plus two. It was a plus two last week. It hasn't gone below any of the moving averages. We're really not far enough above them for me to go to a plus three. So plus two on healthcare. Industrials, look at that, up week. However, let's take a look at these candles compared to the candles we saw in the real estate sector. Remember, the real estate sector gave up ground very begrudgingly. Not so much in industrials. These are some pretty ugly candles. And even on Thursday, you've got a long upper shadow that tells you at one point it was trying to make a run and just the sellers came in and hammered it. This is likely going lower, but when we take a look at our technical scores, it's above the moving averages. So we're going to keep this at a plus two, but just be aware that this is coming into the week with a lot of downside momentum. This might be a sector that you want to wait a little bit to really see if it will hold up if the market sells off this week. Financials had an up week. Look at the candles. Okay, nasty candles on Thursday, Friday. We probably have a little bit more downside. But when the buyers come back in, this is clearly a sector that people want to be in. Plus three is the sector. Moving over here to consumer discretionary. This had a monster run. We loved this sector. It simply had three nasty candles, just like the rest of the market did it was basically a market perform, but we've got to take it from a plus three to a plus two. It's sitting on that 20 period moving average right now. Here we have tech. Tech failed to make a new high. 
on Tuesday. Everything else made a new high on Tuesday and on Wednesday. It didn't. And these candles are ugly. Ugly, ugly candles. And here we are looking to break below the 50 period moving average. We are below this last support. Tech does not look good. It looks the worst of all the sectors. It has moved to a negative one. Last week, we had materials at a plus one. We had a big move up on Tuesday, and then it took three days to give it all back, but it did give it back. We're right back where we were. We're just gonna stay at this plus one. And the energy sector, look at that. The energy sector showing some signs of life. It says, hey, I know the market's weak, but I wanna move higher anyway. We've gotta move this from a zero to a plus one. It got some selling on Friday, but we have to take a look and say it is slightly stronger than it was last week. So if we take a look at the movements, this is where we were last week with consumer real estate and financials as the strongest sectors. Well, we had a lot of things downgraded this week. So we had consumer move down, we had comm services, utilities moved to zero, technology to a negative one, energy moved up to a plus one. This is where we are right now. Think about this. The markets look ugly. Like I said, I don't want to try to put lipstick on it, but when you take a look at technical scores, things are still looking okay. There's a lot of sectors that are in the bullish area. I think you can still look to play bullish, just less bullish than you were, let's say a month ago. Real estate financials look the strongest. Healthcare, consumer industrials look the best after that. But remember, the candles that were looking really ugly, you know, consumer industrials had three big red candles that probably keep going. But materials and energy had good weeks. Healthcare had a decent week. Overall, there's still enough reason to be bullish in the sectors. Have you been trading in the markets for at least two years? Are you starting to see some decent progress? Is that progress so small because of your limited account size? Maverick Trading is a prop firm that provides capital to profitable traders you trade a minimum $25,000 account and keep 70-80% to 80 of the profits. After two, consecutive profitable months, you move to a $50,000 account. As you keep progressing, you will be able to trade six and seven figure accounts. To learn more about trading for Maverick Trading, either click on the apply card in the top left, Click apply at the end screen or click the link in the description to watch our recruiting video that explains more about Maverick and prop trading. If you like what you see, apply for a position and meet with our recruiters. Are you our next trader? Let's take a look at our trade slots. These are the slots that rolled off. So the ones in the red are the trades that rolled off this last week. So we lost the utilities, lost the real estate, lost the healthcare, lost the financial and lost in energy. So those roll off and the green ones we put on new last week. Now we did get a downgrade in our market score. We are no longer a plus three, we are now a plus one. So what does that mean? It means this is where we want our allocation. We can have no more than two plus twos, no more than five plus ones, no more than four zeros, no more than three negative ones, no more than one negative two. So this is what I love about the slot system is that it is basically prohibiting you from getting too far out over your skis when the market pulls back. It's, this is prohibitive. You cannot enter plus threes if you adhere to your rules, which you should. So let's talk about what we're going to fill here. I'm going to take two zeros here in utilities and comp services because those sectors are zeros. I want to get bullish. I want to get more bullish in some of these sectors. But as you can see, I am al allowed two plus twos. I already have two plus twos in industrials and consumer. I actually have a plus three as well in real estate. Now look, some people in this system, they take it down. When the allocations change, they take it down. I don't, I just leave my trades working. So as you can see, I have no ability to add plus twos and plus threes. My slots are all full. So the most bullish I can get on stuff is plus ones. This is it. So I want to get bullish on the ones, the sectors that I have open where I don't have trades in that also are good scores. So as you can see, healthcare financials are plus two, plus three. 
This is where I want to add on bullishness. And then I have no bears, no bears whatsoever after this. And I'm going to add one tech. As you can see here, I'm really close to like a net plus one when looking just at our slots. Let's go in and find some of these trays to fill these slots. And look, there's lots of different trays that you can take in these. Go ahead and look around. Look for your own trade setups if you don't like these. In utilities. Utilities is a tougher sector to do because not a lot of stocks in the sector have weekly options. This is one of them that does have weekly options, PG&E. And if we take a look and see where this thing has been trading over the past two months, we see that we basically are between 17 and 19 with 18 in the middle. Is there any reason to think that this stock is going to take off substantially above 1850 or fall substantially below 1750? I don't think so. The sector is zero. Um, the market, again, could be bouncing. It could be falling. We don't really know at this point. But at this point, I think this looks like a pretty good sideways trade. So we're going to take this, the August 7th, sorry, the August 2nd, 171819 butterfly. That's going to be right in the middle. And that's going to be for two weeks. So we've got a butterfly on PG, PCG. Com services, we're also looking for a sideways trend. Now, one of the things that I had some difficulty on, and I'm going to talk about this in other sectors, is that we're right in the middle of earnings. And whenever we're doing plus ones, zeros, negative ones, we're doing trades that are theta positive. Time. We want time to bleed out. We don't really want delta. We don't want movement of the underlying stock. Earnings tends to have a lots of volatility and push things all around. It's just not what you want in your plus ones, zeros, and negative ones. So I had to avoid a lot of stocks. And I put in a screener, just avoid all the stocks that have earnings in the next you know, two weeks. So I didn't have a ton to choose from. This one is paramount. I found other stocks that looked better on a chart. But when I, when I looked in a screener for good looking charts that didn't have earnings in the next two weeks, it was, it was slim. So at this point, we got to pick what we can trade. This is just trading here between 10 and 13. 1150, there are 50 cent strikes on this. So it's just a matter of, okay, where do you think the midpoint is going to be? I'm looking to do this 1050, 1150, 1250 butterfly. So basically just right in here saying, hey, it's going to stay in this area. It's not going to go outside of that area. Now our profit window is going to be a little smaller, probably something like this. Two weeks out, this is the, the bet that we're going to be making here. If you want to be a little bit bullish, then you can. Take a look at this 11, 11.50 call spread. Again, this is going to be theta positive. As long as it closes above 11.50, you're going to be profitable. If you want to be more negative, then you do the 12, 11.50. As long as it closes below 11.50, it's going to be profitable. As you can see here, there's lots of ways to play these with options. That's a great thing about trading options. Healthcare, we wanted to be plus one. This was another one that I found lots of good charts, but when I sorted out stocks that didn't have earnings over the next three weeks, all of a sudden, it got a lot smaller. So I basically had to choose between a small number of trades, but I want you to understand, look, if the healthcare sector goes up, then pretty much all the stocks in the healthcare sector are likely to go higher. At least that's the tailwind to it. If we got the call on the market in the sector, then what stock we picked really wasn't that big of a deal. So here's a great winner. UNH had a big run, had a big breakout, from an earnings report. So earnings are already out. The big question is, does it hold on? And that's the, that's the call for this trade that is gonna hold on. So we're gonna look at basically the 565, where it is now. Where it is now, we're saying, hey, we think it's going to hang out above this point. It's gonna be a very tight trade on a $560 stock. We're doing a $5 spread. This is 0.1%. This is what we're playing with here. This is such a Tiny, tiny, insignificant fraction of a trade. So basically, 
We're trading here between 560 and 565. If it's above 565, we win. We win and we're gonna keep about you know 40% of the spread. If it tanks, we're gonna lose 60% of the spread. That is the trade. If you do wanna be more bullish, I do like this trade on the bullish side. So the 565, 575 would give you a plus two where you're risking 40% of the spread and profiting 60% of the spread if it does move your way. Financials, another sector we really like, Robinhood. All right, here is Robinhood. I believe this stock has earnings somewhere in the August 6th or 7th. You're going to have to check the calendar, but I'm looking to do this August 2nd anyway. Nice chart pattern. It's hanging on. I mean, take a look at this week. This week was fine. It was just fine. We're actually up for the week. Pulled back, gave us a green candle on Friday, which I love. Friday was a down day for the rest of the market, but cryptos had a really nice week last week. And Robinhood is tied to cryptos, so it's going to move along with them. Bitcoin is all the way back up to 67,000, looking to make another run at all time highs. I like this one, but my allocation says I can only play a plus one. That's it. So I'm going to play the 2350, which the stock is at 2341. I'm basically saying, you know what? I think it closes above 2350 within two weeks. That's my bet I'm making. I've got downside risk. I'm going to collect about 40% of the spread, risk about 60% of the spread. That's the trade. I cannot get more bullish because my slots won't allow. If the market bounces this week, I'm going to get extra slots opened up on the bullish side then I can add them, but I can't add them now. My hands are tied. Now, granted, I can do whatever I want, but this is where the discipline of a trader needs to hold. Last trade tech, we're looking at a negative one. This is Lyft. I talked about this one on my Thursday video, said this thing looks absolutely great for a low base breakdown, and it did. You can see it just keeps falling, keeps falling, this is what I call the march of death, these kind of stocks, the march of death. They fall, they base. Then they gap up, and then they get sold off. Any gap ups and sell offs you want to be a seller of, any bases to break down you want to be a seller of, basically you want to get short in these stocks and just give yourself enough time for it to work out. I'm only going to go a negative one. I could go a negative two. I have a slot open, but at this point, look, if the market gets more bullish, I'll get more slots next week, and then I can become more bearish. But I'll just wait. I'll just wait that week. So the trade I'm doing is the 1312. The 1312 bear put spread. That's a negative one, so I'm going to be getting 40% of the spread, paying 60% of the spread. So I've got that as far as risk reward goes. If you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you could go out another week and go down in price a little bit down to that 11. If you have any other trades you want to share, go ahead and go onto the website, go to the members area, go onto the forum, and let's get some talk going between our traders. Wrapping this up, at this point, this is just a pullback. Anyone that tells you that they know that the market's going to go down more or that they know that it's just a pullback, they're lying to themselves. And they're lying to themselves because they just haven't done this enough to know that you have no idea. I have no idea, you have no idea. As traders, we deal in probabilities. That's it. We're in a world of probabilities where nothing is a guarantee, nothing is certain. Anything can change over this weekend. We could have some terrible natural disaster or they could find uh, unlimited energy supply that's going to put us into a whole new world. Again, anything can happen. We deal in probabilities and at this point, the probabilities are saying this is just a pullback. Remember, probabilities means 65, 70%, 52%, 58%. Who no, no one knows what it is. It could be a 35% chance that it was the top and we're going to fall significantly further. We don't know. But as traders, we deal in probabilities. So because the probabilities of us going higher have decreased lately. Two weeks ago, there was a much higher probability that we went higher than there is today. All we do is we just scale back our bullishness. Use those slots. They'll control it for you. If the market bounces 
and gets back into a nice trend, we'll get more slots opened up over the next couple of weeks. If it doesn't, then we're going to be constrained to plus one, zeros, and negative one kind of trades. Follow your systems. Make sure that you are always thinking of probabilities, not guarantees, and plan out everything around it. Everyone have a great weekend. Everyone take care. Goodbye, everyone.